Joining us now in an exclusive interview is Tassos Sergino Kakos, uh, Myocardia CEO. CEO. Uh, thanks so much for, for joining us, uh, Tassos. Uh, good, good to have you with us. I, I wanted to kick off on, on those key aspects of the disease. I mentioned a couple of the statistics there. It, it's much more widespread than perhaps some people uh, have realized, often undiagnosed, and it can be, though thankfully not always, it can be deadly. Uh, that's right, and it's a it's a pleasure, Wolf, to be on the show here with you guys today. Thanks for having me on. You're absolutely right about that. It is actually the most common genetic disorder on the planet, uh, roughly affecting 12 million people, and as you mentioned, 650,000 in the U.S. The diagnosis rate is low, partly because it is underappreciated. We need to do more education around the disease, um, and it's 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 out there. And so we're spending a lot of time and energy with the community, making sure that we raise awareness on how to identify the disease, how to see it. When you know what to look for, you can really diagnose it, whether it's through genetics or through echocardiography and imaging techniques, the technology is there. And up until now, if people had been uh, correctly diagnosed with it, it's been a case of really managing your life with the condition, but, but your drug is, is changing that. No, that's right. You hear countless stories from people who are suffering from this progressive debilitating chronic disease. It's a disease that affects people in the prime of life. It is a younger person's disease and condition, and they cope throughout their life. It progresses over years to reduce their functionality. They get winded walking across a room. They stop taking trips. They don't. We've had people who have um, experienced our clinical trial talk about how they can walk on a beach on the sand, something they hadn't done before in decades. And so it really is. The, there are severe complications. You've noted some as well that you have experienced personally, Wolf. That happens. It often gets the headlines when you hear of athletes who um, uh, suddenly and tragically drop dead playing on the playing field, uh, odds are it's HCM. You're obviously doing really important work. I I'm just curious what the environment like is like right now, whether, whether there's been a delay, how hard it is to get approvals, given that COVID-19 is so dominant and that's where all the focus is when it comes to FDA or clinical trials, what, what that's like right now. Yeah, it's an important point you're raising. I think there's two facets to it. For us, I have to give a lot of gratitude and thanks to the people at Myocardia, the scientists and the employees who are working hard despite everything going on at home for them um, to really push through in these studies. Also have to thank the patients who have participated in the studies and the the clinicians who take care of folks, we haven't seen an impact, let's say, to our business in driving um, our programs forward, which are important. The FDA component of that, we have also not seen any sort of um, uh, delays or hiccups. The relationship we've had with the FDA and the interactions have been very productive. They've been super communicative and uh, continue to do so. And Tassos, what's the opportunity here for, for myocardia? I mean, as we already noted, that the biggest problem uh, for HCM is, is lack of identification of people. 85% or so uh, of people that have it don't know that they have it. So I guess those 85% wouldn't be potential buyers of, of your drug because they don't know they've got it. Well, there's a lot of work that we're doing to change that. And not just us, but the entire HCM community from the patient advocates to the clinicians and to families. I have to say there's many exciting uh, technologies to think about. You've heard of uh, these wearable watches that are measuring um, electrocardiographic rhythms. We are miniaturizing and learning a lot more about how to do echocardiographies, the ultrasounds that happen right now in hospital settings, doing those remotely. And uh, what, what's not unusual, and I think we should expect it, I certainly do, is as efforts like this take place, coming out of a major medical conference, really shining a light on the disease, the diagnosis rate typically will increase and improve. We just haven't had anybody spending, from industry at least, spending time and energy with uh, caregivers and cardiologists helping really educate. Tassos, thanks uh, so much for, for joining us today, and, uh, and, and good luck. I mean that more than ever. Thank you. Thanks, Wolf. Thank you.